Welcome to episode number 10 of The Car Flip Show. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about Trident Gum. Okay, not really. We're gonna talk about how to establish value. This is our prop. We're gonna answer a question from Kashif from thecarflip.com blog. And we're also gonna look at my profit over the last two days. I have four vehicles. We're not gonna go into too big a detail, but we're gonna look at what I made on each one over the last two days. So our first thing we're gonna look at is the Trident Gum. And this is our example for how to establish value. And the reason I bring this up and I bring the Trident Gum is because recently in the Facebook um, group, the Car Flip Facebook group, we've had a lot of questions that I've seen people asking and I just wanted to address it. Um, if you're not a member of the Facebook group, just go to thecarflip.com, top of the page, you'll put your email address in. You'll get an email from me right away once you submit that. Uh, there'll be a link in the bottom where you can join the Car Flip group. You'll click it, I'll add you, and then you can see all these questions and all the videos and um, helpful tips that are being posted in that group every day. Um, not just by me, there's a lot of people that um, are very experienced and are there that answer questions that other, other people have, so it's a great free resource. Um, just put in your email address on the website and uh, you'll be added to that. That group once you click the link um, but basically the questions that I've been seeing were you know I'm just getting started or I really want to start flipping cars I just don't know where to start like how do you know how much to pay for a car which is a question that I don't just see on the Facebook group I have emails all the time and I always take it down to something more simple which in this case is Trident gum sometimes I'll talk about cinnamon toast crunch that's one of my favorite cereals um, Trident gum the tropical twist you know if you go to the store this will be right beside the green pack don't buy the green pack, the orange pack. You gotta go with the orange. Um, the Tropical Twist, this costs $1.49 at most gas stations that I've stopped in. Around here um, in Raleigh, North Carolina, Sheets is kind of the place that I go, so this is $1.49. Every now and then it's on special, like two for two or something, but $1.49 is the going rate, but I didn't pay $1.49 for this. I paid 50 cent yesterday in a pack of like 18 or 20 uh, from Sam's Club. So I bought a bunch of them, I saved the money. Obviously, Sheets is making a good bit of money because they're probably paying less than that. So there's a decent markup, but understanding value. I know this is worth $1.49. I know Cinnamon Toast Crunch is worth fill in the blank. Um, if it's on sale, maybe you can get it for $1.50, $1.79. It's usually like $2.59 for the 16.9 ounce. Like I know my Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Um, every now and then it goes buy one, get one free, and they'll mark the price up and so you can get you know two boxes for you know three dollars. Um, you know, I come home with like seven or eight boxes and my wife is like, where are we gonna put all of this? And you know, I don't care where we're gonna put it, I need my cinnamon toast crunch, um, which is also why I buy you know this by the case because I go through a lot of gum. Um, but establishing value on this is easy. You know, fill in the blank with your favorite product that you buy at Walmart or you know the grocery store, you kind of have a general idea of what those things are going for. Now the problem with this gum is, if I pay $1.49 for this, or if I pay 50 cent for it, even though people are used to paying $1.49, I'm gonna have trouble selling this for $1.49 because who's, who wants to buy a pack of gum from somebody they don't know? That's kind of weird, you wouldn't do that. Um, people go to the grocery store, people go to Sam's Club, people stop in gas stations to buy gum. The good thing about cars is, people buy cars from other people. They aren't necessarily concerned about who the people are as long as they feel comfortable and you know they're not um, in an area where they don't feel um, unsafe. So um, if you are not unsafe, then you probably have a good chance of selling a car. It's just understanding the value and how much a car is worth. Um, right now I have several cars outside. Just one for example, I have a 1999 Jeep Wrangler. It's lifted, 35 inch tires. Six inch lift, um, it's got body armor all the way around it. It's in pretty decent shape. Um, it isn't all the way ready yet, but it's got 98,000 miles. Um, roughly, it's worth around $11,000. Now, because I sell a lot of Jeep Wranglers, I know immediately within $1,000 what the car's worth. So if I say it's worth 11, maybe I could get 12, maybe I get 10. If we're using 11, I at least have a baseline where I know what I could expect to sell it for. I knew that number before I sold it. Now, I'm gonna say that again. I'm gonna fix that. I'm gonna try something for you too. When I do that, maybe in the future, that would be a benchmark to go back and correct. Just as a note, as I'm talking to you in the future. Um, so, I forgot where I was. See, I did that and I forgot where I was. 11,000. 11,000. I know that vehicle's worth $11,000 because I know Jeep Wranglers. I buy and sell a lot of them, which is why it's nice to have a niche that you flip in. Uh, maybe it's pickup trucks, maybe it's Chevrolet Trailblazers, maybe it's fill in the blank, Mustangs. Um, I do Jeep Wranglers, so I know that vehicle's worth 11, maybe I get 12, maybe I need to sell it and I take 10. But I have to know what that baseline number is 
from a value standpoint. You know, the, the Tritic gum, it's worth $1.49. So if I get it for 50 cents, I know I got a good deal. Getting a good deal on a car that you're buying to flip is necessary because we don't make our money when we sell it. Anybody could sell this Jeep Wrangler for 11,000. Like you park this Jeep Wrangler in your grandma's driveway, she could sell it for 11,000, no problem. The, the part of flipping where the money is made is when we buy the vehicle. So I bought this vehicle for $6,500. They were asking 9,000. I've talked about this in another episode. I forget which one, but I, they were asking nine. I offered six. They said, no, I followed up. He said it could take seven. I got there and got it for 65. So for me, I have now established my profit margin or the potential profit margin from 11 to 65. That's $4,500, I believe. Now I have had to put some money into it. I had to buy some rails to go on the side to cover up a little bit of body damage. Had some mechanical things that were still working out. So let's just use a ballpark number and say I spend $1,000 on it. So my profit margin has now shrunk by $1,000. So instead of it being a $4,500 potential profit margin, we're now at $3,500. And that obviously can grow. If instead of 11, I find out I can get 12, it goes back to 45. But what if I only get 10, it goes down to 25. I'm, st I'm still okay with that. I had someone the other day say, well, you know, you say you make $2,000 on almost every car you sell. Like, there's no way you do that. And I, I do most times, and actually I have a list here of some cars that I sold recently where I didn't make $2,000, but my average benchmark hovers right around $2,000, but I think what I told them was like, what if I'm half wrong? Like, what if, what if, I'm, what if you only make $1,000 on the side flipping cars? I think you're still having a pretty good day. Um, so we'll get into some more cars later, but establishing that value is key. It's crucial. If you can't understand the concept behind establishing value, you're going to have trouble flipping cars. But when things seem complicated, it's usually best to take them to their simplest forms. And that is every car has a value. Every car is worth X amount. And sometimes that fluctuates depending on where you are and the potential buyers near you. But for me in my area, this Jeep Wrangler is worth $11,000. Now I know that because I know Jeep Wranglers. You might not know fill in the blank type of car that you want to sell. You can find out a ballpark value by going on somewhere like Craigslist or the Facebook Marketplace. Um, you can search, let's say we're going to do 2007, uh, a 2007 Chevrolet Trailblazer. So we would go and we would search 2007 Chevrolet Trailblazer. We're going to see multiple offers from multiple individuals and dealers. I usually try to use values from individuals because they're going to be on the lower side. So we're going to have one with 160,000 miles. We're going to have one with 104. We're going to have one with 57,000. But we're going to notice a trend on prices based on mileage and condition. So you're going to have a, a curve that goes up and down based on condition and mileage. You might want to look at the 2006 and the 2008 just to see how those fluctuate. So you should eventually be able to establish a benchmark price of what you could expect to sell a vehicle for. Once you have established that number, then you know where you need to buy because you obviously want to buy below the value. So if the benchmark number is $5,500, we want to buy at whatever level profit that you want to make. So if you want to make $2,000, you need to have at least $3,500 or less in the vehicle. Meaning if the vehicle is going to need work, you might need to buy it for 33. So you can invest $200 to have 35 to then sell it for 55. That is at its most basic form, establishing value. This cost $1.49. I paid 50. There's 99 cents that I saved on this to which if somebody would buy this Trident gum from me, you know, from a stranger they don't know, which I wouldn't, I could potentially make 99 cents on this. You know, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, you buy it on sale, you know where that's gonna go. The last car you bought and sold, when you sold the car, you had a good idea of what the car would have sold for. Think about that deal, the time you sold that car. What if you could buy that same car for $2,000 less? That's $2,000 profit that you could make because you would kind of understand the value on that. That's at its most basic form, establishing value. If you have any questions about that, feel free to ask them in the comments below. I'd be more than glad to answer them. Next, we have a question from Kashif, and this is actually a question. Kashif, if you're watching this, I missed this. You posted this on February 4th originally, and then you posted it again on February 7th. I missed both of them. Um, but the second question you asked was, do you put insurance on every car you buy if you don't have a dealer's license? 
The second question was, or could we just transfer insurance onto the next car every time we sell a car and buy another car to flip? There's a few different ways that people go about this. For me, it's going to be different than how you do if you don't have a dealer's license. For me, I have garage liability insurance, which basically means I have, I think it's eight dealer plates. That insurance covers whatever car I put the plate on. So if it's what I'm driving home, if it's what I'm driving on vacation, if I buy an RV, the RV is covered based on that dealer tag. It's actually a really good deal. Um, it can save you a lot of money in insurance if you have multiple vehicles, like if you have a boat and you want to tow it or you know you put the tag on the trailer. It, it saves a lot of hassle on different um, types of vehicles if you have more than one. But for you, you don't have garage liability insurance. You also didn't just get a text of somebody coming to look at a car. Um, so 06 Jeep Wrangler, hopefully they're coming on Saturday. Um, but your insurance is going to be tied in with your personal liability insurance on your vehicle. So most insurance companies will cover you on a purchase of a vehicle. Let's say you buy a vehicle two hours away. They don't necessarily um, require you to call right then because let's say you buy it at nine o'clock at night or you buy it you know, seven o'clock in the morning on Saturday. Their offices probably aren't open. So there is a, in most insurance um, policies, there is a clause that says that you could drive the vehicle home call on regular business hours and they can add the insurance then. So a lot of people, I'm just going to say a lot of flippers that do this for a living don't necessarily add insurance on every vehicle. I'm not recommending that. I'm only telling you what a lot of flippers do. So they will buy the car, they'll drive it home because technically they're covered because they just purchased the vehicle. They'll drive it home. They're not going to be doing a lot of driving on it anyway because they are just flipping it. So that is one way that certain people go about it. If you want to be totally, you know, on the books and buy the book, you would buy the vehicle, you would try to call the insurance company right away. Maybe you couldn't, so you would still drive it home the same way. When you got home, you would add coverage. Um, when you sold it, you would take the coverage off. Um, how you go about that with your insurance company, what they require you to pay for that, they would obviously prorate that. Um, you also could get into what you need to do with the title. I think in your previous question, you'd ask, do you title every vehicle? Do you, do you, do you not? Do you have to have insurance? Uh, so basically, on that note, you can title a vehicle without adding insurance. At least here in North Carolina, I can get a title for a vehicle registered in my name and I'm not required to have insurance. It's when I um, get the, the actual tag and the official registration. So when you title a vehicle, you don't necessarily register it, um, even though it's in your name. Um, when you get the registration and the tag, that's when you're required to have insurance. So you could get a title, it's in your name, but you wouldn't have insurance. So technically, you're not supposed to drive it. So it's up to you if you allow someone to take it around the block, you ride with them. Some people, again, not recommending, recommending this, just telling you what a lot of flippers do. They would take a tag from one of their personal cars, put it on that car and allow someone to test drive it. Again, not recommending it. I'm just telling you how some people do it to save money. If someone was to get in an accident while you're on a test drive, you know, have fun explaining that one. But it is how a lot of people would skirt that rule and save money on the insurance and also save money of not having to put a tag on it. So I hope that helps. If you have any follow-up questions, feel free to you know, leave them here on the YouTube video. I'll definitely not wait six months to answer this question. So I hope that helps. The next thing we're going to look at is in the last two days, I'm just going to talk about the profits. I'm not going to get into extreme depth on this. Um, one reason is because a lot of people um, could have just recently bought these vehicles. So I'm not going to get into the specifics on each individual car. We do have a course coming out. It's going to be the exact name of the course. We haven't decided. We've been filming videos. We're going to be filming some videos this afternoon from a car auction, actually teaching what we need to look for on vehicles, exterior, interior, drivability, mechanical. But I'm not going to get too in depth here. In the course for members only, we will be going in depth on most cars that I sell, going through car by car, profit, you know, exact profit that I made on each individual one what I did to the car. So we'll have a list that you can scroll through to get an idea of maybe what you could sell a similar car for. Just kind of, so you'll have a blueprint to go through and see what I'm doing. So maybe you can du duplicate on your end. But over the last two days on my end, I've sold four cars. Every time I sell a car, I like to make money. And I had one rare instance that I actually broke even on a certain vehicle. Um, it was a vehicle that I bought, my wife drove it. Um, ended up having timing chains go out. We had two catalytic converters we had to replace, um, have a starter we had to replace, we had to replace the battery. A lot of unforeseen things popped up on this one that just doesn't normally happen. Um, and the things on these, you know, I, I've been very careful recently 
when I'm at the auction, especially of going over these vehicles ahead of time. This was just a freak thing that everything happened to go wrong at the same time and none of it was visible ahead of time. So on my end, definitely my loss. Fortunately, I broke even, which if you buy correctly, that's a good part of buying correctly. Worst case, a lot of times, is you do just break even. So that's, you can't say that about the stock market. You can't say that about, you know, fill in the blank, whatever investment you're trying to do. Because um, a stock can be worth zero. It can be, you know, worth the sheet of paper it's printed on. A car is never worth zero. Like, it's always worth something. Like, even if it's just a shell, it's worth what it, you know, it's worth $300 scrap. Um, in this case, the car had a lot of value because it was a newer, it was a 2008, it had good miles. Um, so it was worth, I think it sold for $7,500. I ended up breaking even, so I'll take that. I was glad to sell it. Um, on another, I made a thousand. Again, I'm not gonna get into too much depth. We'll probably do some follow-up on some older cars I've done in the future so you can get some more depth, but I made a thousand on another. I made 1,400 on another, and my notes are here, and I made 2,500 on another. So for the last two days, I made a total profit of $4,900. Obviously for me, everything that you see behind me or around me, you can't see it around me, but um, I have a lot of expenses and overhead to pay. So a lot of that will cover my overhead, but everything that I did here, you could definitely do in your driveway, at your house, wherever you are. Um, I don't know what you make income wise, but $4,900 in two days compared to your month. How does that look? Um, how do you feel when you get up in the mornings and you hit the alarm clock and you open your eyes, what is that first thought that happens? For me, I, my wife gets a little frustrated sometimes because I'm excited, I can't wait to get to work because I know it's gonna, be, it's gonna be doing what I enjoy. Like today I get to go look at cars at the auction, I get to go buy cars at the auction tomorrow. I really enjoy what I do and I was able to make $4,900 in the last two days. Um, if that is something that sounds interesting to you, Definitely stay tuned to this channel. If you're not subscribed to this channel, you know, hit the subscribe button. We'd love to have you see more of our videos. Um, we do have a course launching in the near future that will take what I'm doing a lot more in depth so you can see my process. And that's exactly what it is. It's a repeatable process that goes around and around and around. It's just a big circle um, that you just do the same thing over and over and over again. And the more times you go around that circle, the more familiar you get with the process. And eventually it just becomes second nature, which is what it is for me. It's a lot of fun. I enjoy doing it. And I'm happy to have you along for the ride. Again, if you're not subscribed, subscribe to this channel. If you're not a member of our email list, go to thecarflip.com. There's a bar at the top. If you don't see it at the top, it's probably because you have ad blocker on. So take ad blocker off, put your email address in. Love to be able to send you emails uh, with updates like this, and future episodes, and more information about the course that is coming up. That's all for episode 10. I will see you in episode 11.